Hello, I'm Jeff Hunt and today we're going to be taking a look at walls. I'm often asked by students how to assess walls, so why don't we jump straight in and take a look. Now you can look at this building over here and you might see this in the following way. You are looking at a rectangle and inside that rectangle six rectangles have been cut out. So you could look at the wall like this, similar to the way that you might make a model by cutting out a great big rectangle and then cutting out six rectangles in between. Now, when we look at a wall like that and we start to see cracks, we have to try and work out why these cracks are occurring. Now, if the obvious ones are running in the ground, that might be fairly straightforward. But if they're in the wall themselves, things can get a little bit more complicated. And sometimes this way of looking at walls, which is a very common way of looking at them, doesn't really help us. So here's a better way of looking at walls, and that is the way in which they were built. So this house here would have been built from the ground up with a series of horizontal bands of bricks. So let's take a look at how we can look at the house differently. So there's the first row of bricks along the bottom, and then they would have built a column of bricks forming the edge of the door frame and the window frame, and then a corner column which forms the rest of the window frame. Then they would put lintels on top of that and build a larger band of horizontal bricks on top of that. Moving to the first floor, they would build two smaller columns of brickwork forming the two windows and then another horizontal band and keep going until you get to the top. Now, as part of the assessment, we also have to take into account the other bricks as well on the property next door. And that is because the bricks themselves don't realize that they are two properties. They're just a huge stack of bricks. And so that is why it's important to always take a look at the whole structure and not just the one you're being asked to look at. Let's fill some of those uh, rectangles in then to make it look a bit clearer. And essentially what we have is the big white bands of uh, long horizontal bricks and then the shorter bands of the gray bricks. And those form rectangles, which we will then put windows into. Now, here's a bit of a golden rule about walls and the way they expand and contract. When walls have a fight, when they expand and contract, the biggest wall always wins. And that's because it's got the most mass in it. And that's why it's important to look at whole buildings like this, like a series of fights between larger and smaller walls. So in this diagram, you can see that the larger horizontal bands will have the most force within them because they've got the bigger mass when they expand. And the smaller little columns, well, they can move about quite independently because they've got those gaps between them, which are the windows. Now, let's take a look at clearing this diagram out so we can see the building behind. So you now you can see the windows in place and you can see that you know it does kind of look like the um, a large rectangle with a small rectangles cut in between. You can see also at the top there that I've put the green arrows at right at the top. You may have thought that I might have missed that out, but actually that's the parapet. And the reason I've done that is because the parapet is a separate entity in itself. That may have been built after the roof was put on, and that is quite capable of moving around quite happily by itself. So you can see that with that large band over the doorway, that can expand and contract. And if it hasn't got expansion and contraction joints in it, which many older buildings don't, that can stress itself so that it forms cracks within its own length. And it can also cause a rotation in the cube above. Now that depends on how many bricks are stacked above that one, but that can quite easily happen. You can also see that when we look at buildings in this way, that we can see above that base, that ground floor window is a whole stack of bricks which are all moving slightly differently. And that can set up some quite interesting stresses. And so we would need to take a look inside and make sure that that is uh, behaving itself. So I hope you can see now that there is a different way of looking at buildings. And as we look at them now, we can see that we can look at this differently. So that when we see cracks occurring in certain locations of buildings, we can start to understand how they work. Well, I hope you've enjoyed that quick little explanation of how to look at walls. If you're enjoying the videos, please do like and subscribe. Thank you very much. 